Hello, Joe Neville here. Now this video is a sequel to the last video. In the last video, I showed you building an Ubuntu server on Hyper-V with the GUI. And that's super okay-ish. The wizard gives you some of the options that you need, but the really big problem is that not only is in this world of automation, you should always be looking for better ways than just clicking through a GUI wizard to get tasks done. But I mean, you know, in a lot of businesses, they can't afford for people to be doing these repetitive tasks. We need to knock out those VMs one after another, maybe a big group of them that are required for new environments. And going through the wizard is very inefficient, just with all those mouse clicks. You're only building one at a time. But also, it doesn't even, in the wizard, give you basic functionality. So this is the one that we built in the last video. I'll right-click there. You have to go through the settings once you've been through the wizard to do things like setting the virtual processor. Uh, another one would be the networking. Now, the, the networking, if you want multiple adapters and things like that, but also... Even in the settings, you don't get all of the options that you can get if you use another approach. Now, what would that other approach be? Well, of course, if you've been paying attention to anything, any marketing coming out of Microsoft for like the last, I don't know, five plus years, they are encouraging all admins to use PowerShell rather than the GUI. I did a plural site where plural site was free back in April. I did a plural site. A course on Microsoft PKI just you know because and everything that the tutor was showing was via PowerShell hardly anything was via the GUI so this is really the way forward and it really does give you a lot more if you're using the GUI you're only getting part of the functionality that is available for you in Hyper-V Manager so it's much better if I know the thing is with PowerShell PowerShell is pretty painful I know maybe some people will flame me for that but I find PowerShell very ugly and I don't like it very much. But if you if you are doing repetitive tasks on Windows, you really should be looking at PowerShell and just getting some scripts together. OK, so here's a few things I was focusing on things like CPU, um, the network adapter in here. With those configurations, it's much easier if you get yourself some PowerShell scripts together. OK, so let's close that one down and I'll show you open up. No, that's the wrong one. There we go. Right. So here is my VS Code, which has a script for, let's get rid of the junk on screen. You don't need all of those. So this is the uh, a, a very simple script. So it's just a bunch of PowerShell commands to build a new VM. And what I've done is I'm using variables. So I declare my variables, you know, to make it a bit more uh, transportable. Um, no, what do I mean? Transferable, let's say. So what we can do is I declare my variables at the top here and then I insert the variables into the PowerShell commands at the bottom here. And this, if you run this script, it will just run from top to bottom and it will run through and build the VM. So let's step through some of the things that we've got here. So we've got creating the new VM, sure. Then, and this is where you can set the virtual CPUs. You can start, set the uh, startup RAM. You can have dynamic. You've got all the options essentially. So you can set dynamic RAM here. Um, so what am I using? I am using the RAM. And this is interesting, actually, the fact that this originally I thought this is a string or an integer. But of course, it's not. What it is, is actually I believe that GB is actually an operator. So let me show you that if you enter 8 GB, 8 GB into PowerShell, what you're actually entering is this. So the integer for 8 gigabytes, you see, it's, and also the other one I'm using 20. So 20, it's not a string. I did, made the mistake of thinking it must be a string. I wasn't really thinking about it to start with. Um, and that, uh, I got stuck a, a bit with that. So essentially, that's what you need for the, you set the RAM there. Uh, here's the next, the next part is to create the disk. So I've created, what I've got is I've concatenated two variables together there to create the disk. So I've got the path, path to disk is this. It's just on this local machine. It's on the E drive. Oh, and that's the, the double slash there. One of those is to cancel 
the other one out for the path. So you need double in there. Um, so that creates the new disk. And then I've got the size there, which is going to be 20 gigabytes. You then add the disk to the VM. Fine. You set the VM DVD drive. So this is for the ISO. There you're linking the VM with the ISO. There's the ISO there. And now this is interesting. So if you're going to have multiple ports on your device, I'm not here, but this is kind of a, a best practice that I use. The ports that are built by default, one of the the one port that's built on a hypervisor VM by default is called network adapter. Not a great name, you know, it's got no number against it. So what I do is I remove network adapter here. So I, I take that adapter off and then I add my own one with a, a different name I called it uh, what have I called it port one there so I'm adding port one and then and this is interesting so if you're into networking as I am and you want to set your network up in different ways for the VM you don't get this in the GUI this is where you have access say what we're doing is we're declaring the VM we're declaring the port and then you can set the different types of ports so I've set an access port you can have a trunk and then you can have what VLANs are allowed on the trunk I've got an access port and then I've assigned an access VLAN which is 199 just like I did with the GUI and then you connect that so the VM and the port is connected to my V switch and finally start the VM. So running this script is much faster once you've got all the um, kinks ironed out with your script. It's much faster for building VMs and this is what I do in my home lab. It's worth taking the time to learn some basics of PowerShell to put this together. Let's run this script. I'm going to call it my new VM five fine run the script there that's it vid dash vm dash one dot ps1 hit return you get some messages on screen about the hard disk being created then it's starting you get this information saying that it's being created and you've got the path to the disk and if we look at the gui you can see that it's running there so that will go off and um start as long as it, yeah okay so it's this is where the iso is just starting okay so that is ubuntu server 2004 ready to go through the install process i'll just kill that off and it's really easy to you know start fire up another one you can see on the gui it's created immediately there we go through and that will start up so much easier approach i mean there, there's definitely better ways if you sink some more time into powershell to create a for loop and you know increment these if you need to create multiple vms the quick and dirty way that i found of doing this is that you can just in the same script you can just repeat the lines and the variable declarations and it will it goes from top to bottom so that you can just increment them as you go and create multiple v vms at once by doing a copy and paste i know this is pretty awful stuff and people would be shouting at me but um well let's call that seven let's call no that's eight that one's seven isn't it so let's go for this we might get a warning about Okay, so that's going off. Is that going to work? Yeah. There you go. It runs out of memory because I've got too many running at the at the start. So um, you might not want to, uh, if you're creating a lot at once, you might not want them to all to start at the same time. Hopefully you might find that useful if you are using Hyper-V. If you're not using Hyper-V for your virtualization, if you're using, you know, other approaches, I'm sure there are ways that are, you know, the CLI approaches and scripting approaches that are better than using the GUI. The watchword, well, the phrase is, if you're using the GUI, you're doing it wrong. Okay, uh, if you want the details, let me show you about this. Where is it? Here. Okay, so I've just put a very uh, simple write-up about this and a sample blog post, essentially, with the script that I'm using there. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. So that, where is that? That's on, so just search for Joe Neville on dev.2. Um, 
That's all for this quick video. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Joe Neville and goodbye.